So last weekend, here at MediaTek Foundation, two 12-year-old boys made history uh, because they were the first team to successfully fly from Long Island to Paris, across the Atlantic Ocean, unlike Joe, <laughs> without crashing. And this has never before been done. It's been tried twice before. And as Joe can uh, attest, it's kind of hard to do. So can you imagine doing that for 30, 33 hours? Pretty tough. Um, when they took off, they had 450 gallons of fuel. The plane is really unstable. This is an example of how you can use a simulator to make learning or history real abstract concepts very real. Try again. So, how do we older folks get this younger generation to, you know, they really think they're good at games and stuff, but how do we get them to really understand history? One of the ways to do that is with deep sims. The deep sim puts the child, it puts the, actually, the kid's hand holding the same controls that Charles Lindbergh held when he tried to do the exact same thing. The only difference is we can use a simulator to set up real world weather, real time weather. We can also uh, set it up so that he has a GPS. So what do you do to keep yourself entertained? Well, one thing you can do is you can look at the inside of the cockpit. All right, that's kind of cool. If you want, you can look around. Look at the realism here. You can see the actual controls, the gas valves and so on. You can see the, the instrumentation. Go on up, uh, uh, Joe, have a look at that. You see this thing right here? If I go here with the mouse, you can actually see the periscope, the famous periscope that Charles Lindbergh used to look out and see the front of the aircraft. Um, our town is home to the Lindbergh trial, so there's a lot of interest in Charles Lindbergh's life and history. And we thought that it would be a really great um, way to bring awareness to using technology to help kids learn. Also, the fact that you can take, uh, take a kid's hand and actually simulate the same situation that Charles Lindbergh faced in 1927 at 8.52 in the morning when he decided to push the gas forward and try to make it down that mud runway. It's such a powerful thing. Um, you can tell a kid that 33 hours is a long time, but until they've actually tried to keep their eyes open for that long, uh, it is, uh, it's quite a different thing. I got the idea for using Microsoft Flight Simulator when I reviewed the program back in 2005, and I realized how real it was, and I like these kinds of simulations. Immediately I wondered, do you think you could actually repeat Lindbergh's flight? So it kind of planted a seed in my head, and I thought, man, that'd be great to try to do with some little kids. So this was the third time we've tried the simulation. Uh, this time was the only time the pilots made it all the way across without any crashes. It's also important to understand that uh, you can choose to fly in either current weather or in historic weather. We chose to fly in current weather conditions and use uh, FAA uh, websites and Google Maps uh, to keep track of for navigation and also to keep track of the weather. Um, that turned out to be kind of a bad move because um, our pilots in this last case ran into a headwind. Now you have to remember this airplane's only flying about 100 miles an hour and when you take that speed across the Atlantic weather can, can greatly affect what time you land. In Lindbergh's case, he was called Lucky Lindy for a reason. He actually picked up a tailwind and he, he was three hours ahead of schedule. We picked up a headwind and also the pilots were trying to climb and they ended up being eight hours delayed. So we landed at around three in the morning uh, on Sunday morning and it was an absolutely grueling experience. At one point, the pilots and their parents were questioning whether they wanted to finish the flight. The two boys had decided that they wanted to see it through and they went and got Chinese food and finished the flight. Another thing that happened, um, at one point they became disoriented in the fog and this was over Nova Scotia 
and they actually turned the plane around and were flying back towards New York using the GPS. And uh, that set them back another hour. We put a note in the library, and uh, also there was a notice in the newspaper that said anyone who wants to try to fly Spirit of St. Louis, sign up. Uh, the two boys who signed up didn't know each other. It was the first time that they'd ever worked on a project together. Uh, just turned out they were both 12 years old and they ended up working well as a team. But it's important that the, the kids uh, choose to do it. They have to want to do it. This shouldn't be something that they're forced to do. If you want to do the flight replication in your own library or school. What you need are two pilots. I highly recommend letting them volunteer for the flight. Age 12 or better. This is Joe, he's 13, he's old enough to do it. Make sure that their parents are on board and they know that 33 hours is a long time. Secondly, you need a copy of Microsoft Flight Simulator 2004, $15 on Amazon.com. And then finally, you need a controller of some kind. Uh, we used a USB uh, Thrustmaster. We picked that up for $35. The total cost is about 50 bucks, and um, you, you can run it on any older Windows computer. As they flew, they were visited by three actual pilots. Two of them um, are currently commercial uh, jetliner pilots who happen to live in our town. And they came in and offered their advice, and that was just really wonderful. Also, one of the pilots, uh, his grandmother, uh, was in her 90s and she was 10 years old when Charles Lindbergh actually took, did the flight. Doing the math, she was born in 1917. So she was 10 in 1927 and she remembers the news of the flight coming over the radio. So it was really wonderful to have her watch her grandson try to repeat this very famous historical event. So there's a lot of that kind of learning. There's cross-generational learning. There's also the joy of letting kids be in a very powerful situation. The, the boys have stayed up 36, 7 hours? 40, 40 hours. 40 hours. At least. And right Andrew is on his approach. Tim has conked out completely. There's a, a thunderstorm, there's only a rain cell. A lot of movements. He's having trouble maintaining altitude. Visibility is almost is less than 50 feet. GPS says we're on the right track. I got it. That's it. That's it. That's it. We're coming on. The runway is inside 1300. We gotta go down. We gotta down. Okay, bring it down slowly. Slower, slower, slower. Slow. 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 Bring it up, bring it up, bring it up. No, no, you're good, you're good, you're good. There it is. Oh, there it is. Runway is inside, so you got visual confirmation. You're good, you're good. Got the cross, got the cross. Got it. Watch, here you go. Nice. 200. 200. 200. We're off the ground. We're off. We're off. You have a shadow. We're off the ground. Let's uh, cut the engines here. I thought I was going to like tip over and hit the wing, that would count as a crash and everything. All right, but you can see um, where you were on the path, and I, that kind of helps us understand why this thing uh, took so long. This is actually a great record that you didn't crash. And here's how you came in. This is, this is during the storms. Okay, um, it's all saved, and um, we are going to officially end the flight. Thank you.